but does it have 275 horsepower? Does it have next generation CBT technology? Does it have better acceleration than a Toyota Camry? Performance once reserved for the few is still reserved for the few. Introducing the used and abused 2010 Nissan Altima. Hey there viewers and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage where today we've brought you absolutely nothing special. All right, what we've got for you today is actually a 2010 Nissan Altima. Now, this car is, I mean, it's a car. There's literally nothing to say about these cars. Is it the worst car? No. Is it the best car? Absolutely not. And that's what's so weird about this car. I don't really have anything remarkable to say, but what I am gonna say is how mediocre this is and how this is the perfect car for somebody who can't afford the better car, but doesn't want a piece of shit like a Ford Fusion. So the solution is the Nissan Altima. Now starting with the exterior like we normally do, the exterior on this car is made out of uh, hopes and dreams and, you know, candy cane goo, because it kind of falls apart. The exterior trim falls off, the bumper has the custom duct tape special, and the front bumper is also falling off. I would say that the body itself is definitely a big negative when it comes to this generation of Nissan, really cutting corners. Now, for those of you who didn't know, in around the early 2000s, late 90s, I believe it was 2001, but I'll be corrected, I'm sure, in the comments, Nissan and Renault got together and they made this butt baby of blasphemy right here, which is half European trash, half Japanese intuition. So there are some good things about this car regarding drivetrain and some bad things regarding drivetrain but let's stick to the body for now. I do like the headlights at night. They give an excellent amount of visibility and I don't usually talk about that, but this car, it's so good. It's actually worth mentioning. If you live somewhere like I do in the middle of nowhere where it's very dark at night because there's no street lights, this is actually very, very bright even without fog lights. So I'm very happy about that. Um, you could get a sunroof. This one doesn't have it. The back doors are enormous. You really get a ton of space in there for the family. It's cheap to maintain right up until the CVT transmission drops in your garage floor, ruining your concrete and your car. But other than that, it's okay. Let's talk about the interior. All right, when talking about the interior, again, they don't hold up well. I've got my glove box duct taped back up because the latch, even after three, is a big piece of crap and breaks. And it's not because anyone's over there kicking it like a small child. Um, it's just a piece of uh, This piece here, this piece of trim, which I guess is for some sort of elaborate ashtray, um, well, it's a piece of um, This here still works for now, but I have had to replace the little clicky arm there because the previous owner of this vehicle, well, they didn't take care of it at all. Now, in here, I do like that you get the two trays for storage, which is nice. So I do approve of that. And if you're a shorter person, it has a sliding armrest. So if you were to move your seat all the way forward, you could still have the armrest, which I think was thoughtful of those smaller people in the world out there. Now, as I've said before in my videos, I'm exactly six foot tall. I've got plenty of headroom even with a hat on and it really is tall people acceptable. So I really think as far as a comfort, the interior is really where they exceeded on this car. Um, I could be comfortable in here and put a full size adult behind me. And I don't mean five foot five wife. I mean, I can actually put my six foot three friend back there and he's not gonna be unpleasant for the ride. Um, 
Power windows on these, absolute toilets, but they are cheap to replace, so that's good. Um, all the interior lighting I haven't had to replace or do anything with, so if I haven't had to do it, it means either it's easy enough the owners can do it themselves, or it simply doesn't go bad because people don't come in complaining about it. So that's a good thing. Safety. It is relatively new for its price point. If you only have about four or $5,000 to spend, this car is pretty safe compared to other cars of the same price point. For instance, four or five grand around here will buy you a late 90s, early 2000s Honda or Toyota. You can get a 2010 Nissan for that. Now, what does that buy you under the hood? Well, let's get to that. So under the hood, I have a lot of good things to say and I have a lot of neg negative things to say. The first good thing I wanna talk about is the engine. I have no complaints with this engine. The 2.5 liter Nissan engine, as I remove some of my fall weather from the engine bay here, is a good engine. It is a good platform. I hardly ever have to change them, and when I do, it's usually because they thought Walmart was qualified to change their oil. There's a story behind that statement. Um, the problem with these Altimas is the CVT transmission is a big piece of It doesn't work at all. In fact, I've seen people come in as early as 60,000 miles of transmission is already shot. So they came out with this new updated one that included a torque converter, it had better stuff. It was supposed to be the superhero to save these cars from problems. It seems to be working. This car has almost 200,000 miles on it. It was replaced once. The original one, of course, went bad. The second one has been going strong. The fluid's still clean. So maybe they fixed it, maybe they didn't. Someone who owned one for a really long time, please explain it to me if it went bad a second time. Um, the maintenance on these engines. If you come into my shop and you have one of these cars and you're just getting regular maintenance, oil change, tire rotation, air filter, the simple stuff, none of it's very expensive. In fact, this is cheap enough. I would dare compare it, even though it's blasphemy, to the best car brand, Toyota. This car isn't that unaffordable to take care of. It's very affordable, in fact. Tires are small, struts are easy to change, oil changes are easy, coolant flushes are easy. Everything's very simple with the 2.5. Now you could also get this vehicle with the 3.5 liter big toilet that you should just never put in anything. Anyone who owns a Maxima, they either just bought it and that's why they like it, or if they've owned it long enough, they know it's a big pile of crap. I have a lot of hatred towards Nissan Maximas because of my experiences with them. But the Altima 2.5, I've been pretty pleased with. So those are the things to keep in mind under the hood. Let's talk about cargo capabilities. Now, one thing that is really interesting is this does have automatic pop does still work. I can fit a whole lot of crap in this car and I really like it. I think it's a lot more storage than the Corollas and the Sentras as we've done reviews on before, but you know, it's a bigger car for that. Albeit it doesn't sacrifice very much gas mileage. This vehicle in particular is still getting around 30 and I do a lot of city driving. This is my go-getter for parts. Now one thing I will complain about as I give time to adjust the camera to this setting here, this is the key that comes with this car when you buy it. This is the dumbest crap I've ever seen. You have to have all these buttons and they all break off and they fall apart. Now one good thing that you know other brands should take heed from, they actually still give you a key inside of a key. So if you do have a dead battery, you could still get in and unlock the car. Something that more expensive, luxurious European pieces of don't have. So this, is where the Altima really shines. From the driver's seat, I have so much space. As a full-size sedan, they've really done this well. They've kept the price point low, and they've still provided a good experience on the interior. We're gonna go for a luxurious drive, ignoring all the scary sounds. Now, what I like about this car, and the reason I'm still using this car, is um, good gas mileage, lots of interior space and comfort. I can't hear all the people outside whining about me driving through their parking lot. It's not a sports performance car as they like to make it out to be in the car commercials that we were mimicking earlier in our video here. It's not a sports car. It's not a 350Z. You're not going to drive. If you do drive it like a sports car and you're constantly hammering the throttle, you will obliterate your transmission sooner. If you grandma drive it and you treat it right and you just use it as transportation, it will last a little while anyway. Because these are so popular to have that transmission fault, these end up with really clean bodies 
in the junkyard often, which means if you have a fender bender, young one at home, things like that, and they wreck it into the mailbox, you can go buy a bumper and fender for this and probably get the right color you want anywhere because they're everywhere. These cars sold like crazy. And I feel like Nissan's really lost its way with this car because back then, referring to this generation of Altima, you had cheap reliability for a temporary amount of time. Now, with the new Murano and the Rogue and the new Altima, you don't even get a limited amount of time. You don't even get reliability at all. They're just junk. So, so what can be done? Well, they need to go back to simplicity. They really do. This gasoline direct injection with all these EVAP problems and all the, the screen nav crap that doesn't work in the new Nissans. This is better than that. And it's cheaper. So that's all we have time for today about our Nissan Altima, the ultimate regular car. So if you're in the market for a regular car, consider one. We'll see you next time on Grumpy Monkey Garage.